Welcome everyone. I am Jenny Moreau from ASUG headquarters in Chicago and we've created a speaker submission webcast for you. This is in response to some calls we've had from folks who've said, hey, I've, I've submitted before, I don't get accepted, or are there any tips and tricks and things I should know in advance? So we've gathered a group of people from ASUG and a wonderful ASUG volunteer to give you a sneak peek behind the submission process, what works and what doesn't. On our webcast, we have Tammy Paulus. Tammy, you want to say hello quickly? Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Tammy. Uh, Lisa Baker, who is our grammar queen and editing person and marketing manager. Hi. And Catherine Glavin. Hi, everyone. I manage volunteers at Champions here at the Sex Chicago office. Great. And I am Jenny Moreau. I help people with their presentations, help make them more effective. So one of the first things, um, I've also developed the speaker development webcast series, which if you are chosen as a speaker, we certainly encourage you to participate in. It gives you some good tools for creating an effective presentation. And the first question we always ask when presenting is not, what should I talk about, but who's my audience? So we want to ask that same question of you. As you're preparing your submission, you need to know who's the program committee. And from here, I'm going to turn it over to Tammy. Tammy, who is the program committee? What do you guys look for? What do you What do you do? Well, thanks, Jenny. Um, this is Tammy again. I'm represent one of the many many people on the uh, ASIC program committee. And uh, just so you all know, we are uh, composed of ASIC volunteers along with our SAP points of contact. And what we do is we help recruit speakers for the ASIC annual conference, and we. Uh, so, uh, look at look for hot topics, and we also are responsible for reviewing and ranking the abstracts, and then we schedule and uh, select and schedule the abstracts, and then we also uh, help you as this potential speaker get ready for conference, and we represent ASUG at annual conference. So that's who the program committee is, and that's what we do. And you guys have some guidelines that we're going to share. I know, I know that these are guidelines yes. that people get after they've been accepted. This is a great opportunity to let people know about them ahead of time. Can you tell us about these? Oh, absolutely. And uh, these, are guide these guidelines, just so you know, they apply to SAP customer and partner submissions. And uh, as the slide says, we don't want any blatant marketing, but we want to know how does your presentation help solve problems? Um, the other thing we want to make sure is, is it in the right track, something I call track authentication. And then the other thing we want to uh, advise you of is to make sure that it, it fits in the 45 minutes allow allotted. So make sure you, you look at it and have a peer review as well. And then I think the next, I'm t going to turn it over to Jenny to talk about who is the audience. Right. But I want to back up for one second, Tammy. I know you've, when you say make sure that it's in the wrong Make sure that it's in the right track, not the wrong track. How often is that a problem for folks, and how can they avoid that mistake? Quite a, that happens quite a bit, um, and uh, how they can avoid that mistake is just to make sure that if I've got if I've got a BI submission, I don't put it in portals. I mean, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. And you know, every day we're looking at the at the tool, and things are in the wrong track. Whether you know it could be an accident or whatever, but just to make sure. Especially, especially if you submit the last day, the uh, chances are pretty high we might miss that. So it happens, it happens a lot. We we hate to miss your your submission just because it's in the wrong track. Mm. And that would be too bad. So yeah, submit. We'll talk about this in a minute. Tammy's favorite thing is submit early, submit often, and I would add to that double check your submission. So as I mentioned, one of the first things that we ask our speakers, you know, we say, what's the first question you should ask? And it's not what should I speak about, it's who is my audience. You know a bit about the program committee. I want you to think about your audience even as you're crafting your abstract. So here are some questions that you're going to ask yourself as you write your abstract. What's their level of expertise? Do you want to present to experts, beginners, middle managers? And what's your level of expertise? Call that out in your abstract. That helps you attract a particular audience. What does your audience um, know or believe in that you can build on? Right? So we're always going to look for commonality. If you can name in your abstract something that you sense other people may be struggling with or even may have had success at, you're more likely to 
provide a compelling presentation and gather people that come to it and, and attract the attention of the program committee. So you say, what do we know or believe in, or what do they know or believe in that I can build on? Also, what do they know or believe in that you have to overcome? Name it, talk about it, entice people. Most important, what's in it for them? Why should someone come to your presentation? Think about this even as you write your submission. And the program committee is going to be looking at that too. Why is this a session that's going to be really valuable for people? We want that value add more than anything. We want to share stories. We want to think about what's my audience like? We'll think through a day in their shoes. Why are they here? This is a big event. They can go to so many different sessions. Why should they choose yours? Why is your story unique? What data do you have that can back it up? Really critical. Is it technically sound? That's something that Tammy was mentioning. We want authenticity. If you say you're going to name a customer or work with a customer, be sure, I know Tammy will validate this, if the program committee calls that customer and they don't know anything about the presentation, how's that go over, Tammy? Uh, not very well. <laughs> it's happened more than once. Not very well. So it's not very authentic if the customer you put on the abstract doesn't know anything about your submission, or you don't have permission to present on behalf of the customer. That's another. That's another um, thing that's happened in the past as well. And how vital is it if, if you look at two abstracts? One has a customer story, and one doesn't. Are you swayed one way or the other by the fact that a customer is involved? Well, customer help helps the tipping point. The content is king, of course. So if two abstracts tell, tell the same story but a customer is involved, chances are that's going to get ranked higher by our ASUG program committee volunteers. Great. So story and back it up. Excellent. I know, Tammy, you have a list of hot topics this year as well that, uh, that, that the committee is really looking for and would like to see submissions about. Absolutely. Thank you, Jenny. We uh, definitely, we've surveyed our membership and, uh, and more than once they all come back to us in the surveys, whether they answer the survey or put in the text. They all want to hear customer case stories and not just, at, not just at conference but on webcast too. I'm sure everybody's heard about, you know, the other hot topics like big data, cloud, and user experience. But the, the survey also says they want to hear more about emerging technologies and best practices. The other thing I want to highlight as well here is you want, you want a topic that has broad appeal because this is a big conference with a lot of thousands of people. So you, if, you have, if you can cover a success story with multiple products, that is ideal as well. The other thing people want to hear about too is upgrades. So, but number one that comes back on all our surveys is customer case studies. So any abstract that, that, that covers how a customer fixed or overcame a problem, that's a popular topic or a popular, popular choice with our ASIC member community. So the other thing is, like Jenny said, what can I give, what, what value add, what can you give to them in your story? So that's what you really want to share and, and how you can share that success story. So make sure you're sharing great information, share your, your, your story, and your expertise as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Jenny to talk about our program committee wish list. Or is that me? I don't know that's that both of us. I, I want to that's piggyback on one. That's both of us, Tammy. And, and I want to piggyback on one thing that uh, I've been hearing a lot about, too. I was in a, a session today with someone who said, well, I, I hear about the company, and then I hear the story, and how great they are, and here's five tips you can take away. That's all good stuff. Back up the stories with data. I'm going to say it again. You know, we say technically sound. So tell the story. We want the story, and then back it up with the data. Story without data sounds too subjective. Data without story puts people to sleep, which takes us to our wish list, interactivity. So that's, that's the first point on the wish list. And even the way Tammy and I and Catherine and Lisa are doing right now, throw the ball back and forth. Have multiple presenters involve your audience. Tell us about the catchy title, Tammy. What things stand oh, out there? Absolutely. I think um, the, you know something gives you know we're gonna, we have over 2,000 abstracts submitted. So you want something that's going to stand out and something that says you know that you you know like one of my favorite titles is you unplugged what? Um, Great. Um, 
yeah, those are those are things that 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 uh, they stick out. And you and you do want fresh content, something something that's been there um, that's been there before. So that's something that you know that you've covered before. And then, like Jenny said, custom uh, customer. Um, Presentations. Make sure that, that if you have multiple presenters, that one of them is a customer. And then we yep. talked about the track, the track authentication before. Make sure it's in the right track. And um, the other thing is, we would like our speakers to help promote the conference. And one thing, if you're if you're good on social media, that's a good way to promote the conference. Yeah, that's great. And it also gets people to attend your sessions, which is really wonderful. That's great. Um, and ASUG is certainly going to support that sort of thing. So, all right, all these great ideas. How do our speakers find out more information? Catherine and Tammy, I know you guys have plenty of good ideas about this. Definitely. Uh, one easy way is to actually log into ASUG.com, and under Communities, uh, go ahead and click on Special Interest Groups. And there you can see the list of a lot of the topics and the communities uh, that are involved in our annual conference programming. Uh, if you choose any of those, uh, go ahead and click on it, and it will actually take you to a jump page, uh, which is customized for each community. And it includes uh, not only the hot topics, but also who those volunteers are. And you can go ahead and click on their name and email them directly uh, in case you are you know, maybe not sure which, uh, which track to you know, submit your, your topic on or if you want to follow up um, you know, with your webcast or with your uh, abstract. So you mean program committees will actually be willing to talk to people even before they've been accepted to work with them on their submission? Do you guys reach out to people? Yeah, go ahead. I know you've, you've reached out to people, right, Tammy, if you have questions? Oh, absolutely. We, we do reach out to people, but you want to make sure that goes back to the catchy title. You know, if it's a catchy title, I, you know, I'll, I'll definitely look at the abstract and if, it, it, you know, if it's a great story but needs a little tweaking, we'll reach out for sure. And then the, um, as Catherine just mentioned, the jump page info, we have other links here about how to get started, some of the frequently asked questions about whether you know ASEC does not compensate for travel, but you do you do get a complimentary pass at, at one of the largest SAP education events, and then another fellow volunteer, Sue Cohane, she wrote a blog sh about shy public speaking. Oh, please, not for me. So some of our greatest speakers last year were first-time speakers that that uh, came out of their shell, and now they're speaking at multiple events. So if it's your first time, as uh, as G as Jenny said, there's plenty of resources and plenty of uh, uh, training for you. And then there's a link um, on ASUG.com, and we put a bit.ly here. You can look at past presentations for ideas. Those are, those are just some of the community resources that are available on ASUG.com and other links as well. That's great. I also want to mention something we talked about. Like, if you've um, presented before and you're like, I didn't get the greatest scores, that's okay. Own it. Say to the program committee, you know what? I've worked on it. I'm, I'm going to get some coaching. I'm, I'm working towards improvement. We're all about supporting you and helping people try new things in different formats. So talk about your desire. You know, the passion is contagious. And if you want to present and have a great story to tell, certainly the program committee and we at headquarters will help you shape a submission and shape a presentation to make it, make it exactly the way you want it to be. So the other thing that we've talked about a lot is um, uh, well, the other speaker guidelines and how those submissions come in. Can you talk a minute about these, Tammy, and then we'll talk to Lisa and that first look, that first visual impact that a submission makes. Absolutely. You know, just to make sure that, you know, there's like a 75-character limit on the title and a 350-character limit in the abstract uh, uh, submission itself. So you just want to make sure that you use concise and exact words when submitting your abstract. And ask yourself, are you going to be able to fit everything you mentioned in, in your abstract into a 45-minute slot? So just make sure that you can do that and that make sure if it's – got too much information, you might overwhelm the committee and they may not think you, you can fit it in the 45-minute uh, time block. So make sure it's easy, concise, easy to read, and then if you're, when, as you build your presentation, make sure it, there's not just too much code or graphics that are overwhelming. Right. Talk like a person. Our next slide is the visual we use in the uh, speaker development webcast, which I always think is funny, right? Let's not assume that everyone knows our acronym. 
and Lisa's got some great do's and don'ts for using grammar and acronyms and just writing a terrific submission that is professional and attracts that audience that you want as well as the submission as well as the program committee. So here, <clears throat> excuse me, I have um, an example of a title, I guess you could say what not to do for a title. Um, What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that? In aviation BI implementation, um, you know, we don't know a company, we don't know what BI is, we, we don't know anything other than, um, from this other than it has something to do with BI. Okay. Um, so on the next slide we'll see um, a better title, which is an actual title from last year's conference, uh, Building the Business Case, How Jazz Aviation's BI Program Took Flight. Mm. So as you can see, it's a little creative with the aviation company taking flight. Yep. Um, so it's creative, it mentions the company name, you know it's a business case, um, and from reading that, you, you get a much better idea of what the presentation is about. And because it is a good title, there's a better chance that, that people will open and, and read your abstract and attend your session. So this just wasn't written like, let me get my abstract over with. This person obviously was thinking about, I have a story to tell, my title sets me up, let me think about the audience. Exactly. Yay. Okay. Give us another don't. <laughs> so an example um, of what not to do for an abstract, and, and this has nothing to do with the content in this paragraph, um, it's strictly just by visually looking at it, you can see the person tried to add bulleted lists uh, w within the submission. Um, we want your submission to be a paragraph of sentences um, and not these, you know, you have the bulleted points at the end and that's where your bulleted list should, should go. So on the next slide. Uh, so this just visually would turn you off. Would this turn you off too, Tammy, if you saw this? Oh, absolutely. That's that's one of the things, you know, back to the tips of being cons concise as, and brief as possible so they, and make sure it can fit into 45 minutes. I don't think mm -hmm. those three bullet points could fit into 45 minutes. Mm -mm. And it's just visually not appealing. And right. since we don't know you, right, it's like, right. Judgment. Well, and I'm going to have to go through and edit it. Um, I do not have a ton of SAP knowledge, so I could be making things wrong. Um, I try to do the best I can, but you know, sometimes I may, may, may make a mistake. Um, so the better uh, condition your abstract is in when you present it, uh, the better it'll be when it is submitted for the world to see. And more appealing. Yes, that's great. Um, so on the next slide, um, I made a recommended fix, and you know, obviously I got rid of the bullet points and just kind of rewrote things and, and cut a few things out. Um, and you know, much clearer example of a paragraph. Yeah, that's great. Um, and some other best practices for you, um, and I think Jenny already talked about that a little, but um, not everyone knows what you're talking about with the acronyms. There are so many acronyms in this space. Um, so definitely try on first reference to spell out the actual name and then put the um, acronym in parentheses after that. And then going forward after that, you can just use the acronym. Um, and here I gave you an example of human capital management and in parentheses HCM. Um, we recommend that you don't ever use the exclamation point. <laughs> um, one, it's just not AP style compliance, which is you know how we edit and go, what we go by. Um, but more importantly, it's um, your content should be compelling enough on its own, and adding a bunch of exclamation points really is not going to help you at all. And it doesn't look professional, right? No, it doesn't. We were talking about this yesterday, and we said, well, you know, certainly in emails or texts or other things, we now use exclamation or punctuation or emoticons because people can't hear us, so we want to let them know our intention. When you're writing an abstract or something for a submission, keep in mind this is a business piece of writing. Uh, someone may want to take this and it, with their justification letter to come to the conference and say, these are the sessions I'm attending. They're going to take the ones that look professional because those are the ones that people say, oh, yes, you have approval to go to that. So, you know, it is business writing. And please feel free to get a peer to review it and read it or ask for, you know, check out some grammar tools as well. You have more good stuff for us, Lisa. <laughs> Um, just the other thing, um, titles um, should be, ca the first word or first letter of every word should be capitalized um, and the title should not be a sentence um, and that's something I've seen a lot is that mm -hmm. it's a full sentence with a period at the end. There shouldn't be any punctuation like that. Um, should it be shorter? The title, like short, like so, you like concise? I mean, I don't yeah. think there's a word count, but it's shorter than a full sentence, correct? I do think there's a word count. Oh, really? There is, yeah, there's a okay. word count. 
But I'm going to work out for the title itself. Um, I mean, you want it to be concise, but, you know, as we said yes. before, you want it to be creative and you want it to yes. do Got all it. those things. So, Got it. I mean, that does take some work. So, and going to my last point here of cutting the fluff, um, you know, you have a very short character limit for your abstract. Um, there's just no room for extra words. So if something is very exciting, it's, you can delete the very. Um, a lot of yes. times you can delete the word that in a sentence. Um, it's just not necessary. It's just the way we talk, so we write it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just really keep that in mind because it'll allow you to put more valuable content into your abstract. Wonderful. That's great. Great tips. And the things that, uh, you know, we talked about creating interactivity. I know, Tammy, you also had some tips on how to make sure that that abstract is concise in terms of peer review. Did you want to share some of those ideas oh, with us? Yes, absolutely. You know, one thing is, you know, have, have your coworkers review it and see if it makes sense to them and, you know, would they attend it. But also have, have some, perhaps have somebody in your family read it, somebody who doesn't know anything about what you do because this conference is huge and you want to make sure that somebody, somebody from outside your realm, they may be a beginner and they want to know more about it, that they can understand what you're doing. So a peer review, much like, you know, if you're a developer, you get a code review, just have someone else review your abstract before you submit it. Yes, absolutely. And also, we have so many amazing speakers from all over the world. I know for some people that English is not the first language. Everyone should get a peer review before submitting uh, an abstract. And certainly, as we've said, don't be afraid to reach out to someone for that extra help from the program committee as well. Okay, the, th the things that I'm going to talk to you about real briefly, too, are the three key things that every, present, every audience wants from a presentation. Interactivity. So even as you create that submission, think about how are you going to involve your audience? What are you going to offer in your session that will engage them? Clarity. I guess we've given that point over and over. <laughs> it's, you know, hit it and quit it in terms of your content, in terms of your delivery, don't overwhelm people with information. Be clear. Rule of three is a great rule to follow. And enthusiasm. If you're passionate about what you're presenting, we feel it. It's contagious. And Tammy says, submit early, submit often. Any other things you want to add to that thought, Tammy? Why is that a good idea? Well, submit early so we can make sure your, your session is in the right track and so we can see it. And then in, also submit early in case, you know, you may need, there, you know, you may, we may want to ask you to make some tweaks to your abstract. You may have a good story, but it may not be written exactly well or it may be too, too brief. So, so if you do that now, we can help you. But if you do it January 5th, <clears throat> which is the deadline, we, we chances are we can't help you. So, and then the other thing about submitting often, you can you could submit more than one abstract. But my personal preference don't don't submit more than three. So if you submit ten, that's like you're just trying to see what sticks. You know what sticks to the mm -hmm. Velcro. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, submit early so we can you know make sure it, your session gets in the right track and gets considered gets the consideration that it's that it's due for sure. That's wonderful. We hope this has been helpful to you. Lisa, Catherine, do you have any, um, uh, oh, here's really important dates that Tammy just mentioned, the uh, January 5th deadline. Um, ASUG.com certainly has information about how to submit, and speakers at ASUG.com. This recording will be posted, as will some tips and tool sheets about grammar, Tammy's amazing blog, which follows up on all of these things that we've talked about, and an audience demographic sheet, which is the first tool that is offered when we do the speaker development webcast. It gives a list of those key questions to ask about your audience. And as I said, helpful to be thinking about even as you write that abstract. Ladies, do you have any final thoughts? Thanks for listening, and we hope that these, uh, today we've given you some uh, tips and tricks uh, to get your abstract uh, accepted for the 2015 ESOG Annual Conference. And we wish you the best of luck, and thank you to Tammy, our rock star volunteer, for joining us today. Thanks so much we for do. joining. Yeah, thank Go you. Go ahead, Tammy. We look forward to your submissions. Oh, yeah, we look forward to your submissions. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.